Despite ongoing improvements in the particular procedure, there is still some early recurrence after AF ablation, and that can be a major problem. We do have a paper in Jack by Defterios et al. Colchicine for prevention of early AF recurrence after pulmonary vein isolation, and it is a randomized controlled study. I'm actually with Greg Marcus, who is the, an associate professor of medicine and director of clinical research in the uh, cardiac electrophysiology department at UCSF. And you've got a really good paper that goes along with this. It's, a, it's an accompanying uh, commentary, colchicine after pulmonary vein isolation. And what you're looking at specifically is mollifying an inflammatory response with a question mark. Can you tell me a little bit about colchicine and how that, first let's go over the study that uh, Defterios et al. did. So the study, so uh, just to talk a little bit about colchicine, we're all very familiar with colchicine, but think of it uh, generally for the treatment of gout. Uh, we also are generally aware that it's an anti-inflammatory drug. Um, so based on the premise that early recurrence of atrial fibrillation after ablation is related to inflammation, these investigators um, performed this very interesting randomized study where patients uh, with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation all underwent the same type of pulmonary vein isolation procedure, were randomized to placebo or colchicine 0.5 uh, milligrams twice daily, and followed for about three months for what we would call early recurrence of atrial fibrillation. And they were able to demonstrate a very statistically significant and, I would argue, clinically meaningful reduction in early recurrence of atrial fibrillation among the colchicine-treated group. So in your commentary, how did you respond to the paper? So we had a few, a few comments. So first, there is this very interesting relationship between atrial fibrillation in general and inflammation. And uh, we and others have demonstrated that it may go both ways, that inflammation may lead to atrial fibrillation, but also that atrial fibrillation may itself lead to inflammation. So it's not entirely clear that an anti-inflammatory is going to work for all atrial fibrillation. And so current efforts have focused on identifying subtypes that may be particularly amenable to anti-inflammatory therapies. So post-operative atrial fibrillation specifically when, when the chest is opened um, is, uh, is, is kind of the, the typical uh, scenario in which inflammation pretty clearly demonstrates post-operative atrial fibrillation. And there's been speculation that early recurrence of atrial fibrillation after endocardial ablation also has a similar process. We previously showed that if you check CRP just a month or two after an ablation, it actually will go up, um, as opposed to, for example, patients undergoing SVT ablation, suggesting that these patients after ablation, presumably due to the extensive burns in the left atrium, are experiencing a lot of inflammation. We also know that patients with early recurrence of atrial fibrillation may not necessarily have long-term uh, recurrence of atrial fibrillation. So it made sense that perhaps giving colchicine would help reduce that inflammation and thereby reduce uh, atrial fibrillation, and that, w that was seen. One of their very interesting uh, additional um, things that they did was to measure inflammatory markers a few days after uh, in all the patients, and they demonstrated that there was clearly a difference between those who got colchicine, they had a bigger reduction in inflammatory markers compared to those who didn't. And statistically, they added the, those inflammatory markers into their multivariate model, which attenuated the association between colchicine and recurrence of atrial fibrillation. And what that means is, is we would call that a, a mediation effect, which implies that the effect of colchicine on the early recurrence of atrial fibrillation occurs due to the reduction in inflammation. So it was kind of a nice proof of concept. So there were um, some things that we need to think about before we uh, apply these findings to our clinical practice. Um, so number one, it was a relatively small study. Uh, number two, there are, colchicine is not without risk. So patients had to be monitored for liver toxicity and myelotoxicity. Some patients had some gastrointestinal upset and had to stop it, and that's a well-known uh, problem with, with colchicine. Um, and the duration was three months, and, and I don't know, and the, and the dose was 0.5 twice daily. We don't really know yet what the optimal duration is. It could be that if patients were given colchicine for a short period of time, that that might be uh, sufficient. Uh, and, and that way, perhaps some of these side effects could be uh, reduced. Finally, I think the, one of the most compelling questions is, 
whether reduction in this early recurrence of atrial fibrillation will lead to a reduction in long-term uh, atrial fibrillation or really increase the overall success of the procedure. That remains unknown, and I think if these investigators are able to follow these patients long-term, that would be uh, a really good to know. So I think of these early recurrence uh, patients in potentially two categories. So in some, it's probably the case that the the, the ablation, for whatever reason, just didn't work for that patient. Right. So they were having atrial fibrillation. They continue to have atrial fibrillation. And if they have it frequent enough, they're going to have it in that early recurrence period. And then there are probably some who have this pro-inflammatory response. And in those people, presumably, it's more likely uh, transient. So it may be that if those uh, two groups are really distinct and you're able to reduce the early recurrence just in the pro-inflammatory group, that may not have an effect long term. However, theoretically, it's possible that by reducing the adverse remodeling that promotes atrial fibrillation, it's possible that in that pro-inflammatory group, you could help them uh, longer term. So you thought it was a pretty, uh, you said it's a valuable contribution to the literature regarding post-ablation AF and perhaps AF in general. Yeah, so, so then the, the other extrapolation, which is um, a bit more of a leap, is to ask the question, um, are there subgroups of spontaneous non-AFib, uh, post-AFib ablation AFib that might benefit from anti-inflammatory therapies? And we've, we've kind of looked at statins. People have not looked at steroids, for example, because nobody wants to give steroids long term, right. but could colchicine uh, potentially be looked at? I, I think you need to identify the right patient population to, to do that study. Well, the paper is by Defteros et al., and that is in Jack, and uh, Dr. Marcus and his group have got an interesting commentary that goes along with it, and that is in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology for Cardiosource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.